All right. We have former Purdue Boilermaker legend Lewis Jackson, also now the coach of the Men and Mackey squad. Uh, Lewis, welcome back to the show, and we'll get right into it. Uh, we'll preview the TBT, and we'll talk some current Purdue hoops. But first off, um, you started Crew Life. Uh, you're working with Rafael Davis. Just talk about what Crew Life is. I know it's an AAU program, but it seems to be much more than just that. So talk about your mission and all the different things you guys are doing. Almost oh, definitely. Uh, first and foremost, thanks for having me on again. Um, yes, sir. Crew Life. Uh, Crew Life was actually started by Rayfield Davis and a few of his high school friends uh, that that them growing up together. I eventually joined right before COVID. Started out as basketball camps, but initially Crew stands for Community Responsibility Education and Willingness. And um, we started out just bringing back camps. Just a lot of kids hadn't had camps, so we started out bringing camps to Fort Wayne. Then it turned into a backpack drive. We've been able to donate Christmas gifts to families, Thanksgiving as well. And now for the first year, while I brought it back to my hometown, Decatur, Illinois, we just had a camp with over 100 plus kids, which was a great thing. And we also now just added the AAU edition. So Crew Life is kind of just expanding, kind of like the Boys and Girls Club. We actually have a cheerleading, um, gymnastics. We got a football team. So we're just kind of trying to be like the new Boys and Girls Club and give these kids, um, you know, outlets and just different things they can experience in life as youth. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's awesome. And obviously you have a lot of coaching experience through Crew Life. Why did you choose to become the coach of the men of Mackey squad rather than playing one last year? Because I believe we talked about that last time you were on the show. But yeah, why are you coaching and not playing for this last year? Oh, it was a it was a tough decision. But um, my initial thoughts, just even getting into the TBT, was eventually like I wanted to get into coaching, and I could see this as a window just to show people, you know, I'm a little bit more serious than getting into coaching and just. My previous two years playing in the TBT, it was cool for my kids, but I noticed trying to train guys and just kind of move up a little bit in the coaching realm. People were kind of like, you know, are you serious yet to really take this over or do you really still want to be a player? And the opportunity came across and I was like, you know, like I need to kind of make a statement to show, hey, I'm serious. This is what I want to do. So I hung up the sneakers. It was a hard it was a hard decision. Thought about one more go around, but I thought this was the best thing for my career moving forward. Yes, sir. Are you looking to eventually coach in the college ranks? Absolutely. I, I like. I love the market. I've always liked to recruit players and help build teams. And I just think, you know, um, being surrounded with high level basketball. But if it's a high level high school job, I wouldn't be opposed to taking it. But the ultimate goal is eventually to get into college and just, you know, be in that world that I've been used to and just try to see how I can make an impact there. Yes, sir. Let's go. So obviously, your squad has a lot of. Purdue players on it, but a lot of non-Purdue players on the Men of Mackey squad. Talk about those guys and, and what can we expect from them. Is there anyone in particular we should keep our eyes on? Um, I think we got a great group of guys. Obviously, the Purdue guys are, are you know, kind of a staple of this. You always got to be excited when you see Kelsey Barlow on the court. You never know what type of dunk, what type of, you know, things he'll do. He's exciting. Um, I'm particularly excited about Eric Hunter Jr., I think a lot of people kind of remember Purdue just being a more of a defensive guy, but I think his game's expanded so much, and the TBT will allow him to kind of show his offensive skill play to help him develop a little bit more and show these guys. But I think Eric's probably the biggest I'm excited for. David Jenkins coming back, I think he'll be a great um, two-year guy because I think obviously for guys coming fresh out of college, you know, not in a, it's not a disrespectful thought, but I think you know you you, you have so much success in college. You maybe don't know about some of the other pros that you may have to see and just that, that pro game and what it translates to. So I think David will be a big time player this year for us. Uh, I'm going to forget some guys that will probably be mad at me. Malik Osborne, we, we picked him up. He's right now with the Phoenix Suns in um, Summer League. We won't have him the first game, so hopefully we take care of business and get him back for the second game. I think he'll be a, a really great addition inside in that paint as well. Will you guys have any practice under the belt before your first game, or are you guys just kind of showing up? Um, we'll practice actually tomorrow. Two guys won't be there um, just because of the itinerary and things they have to do for their obligations. And then Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday will probably be probably the toughest practice. We'll get out there, actually get to put a little five on five. But for the most part, it's a little bit of a couple sets here and there. But guys are pros, so it's more about just competing hard and just kind of you know playing the game the right way. Yeah, so you kind of touch on it, but – you only have so much time to implement plays and sets. Will there be much, or is it just pickup kind of? 
Uh, it's more pickup. I mean, you got quick hitters. Like, obviously, with these guys, you should know about spacing and, you know what I mean, just how to run the pick and roll and what's really going on right now. But I think that's the beautiful part when you are able to get an alumni-based team like we are Purdue guys. At least you got five or six guys that kind of understand the same concepts so we can get out there, play a little motion. We understand the same principles. And it's just getting those other guys incorporated when it does kind of go freelance to just understand our uh, Purdue offense in a sense. Sure. If you guys do make a run, could we see any Purdue greats who are not on the squad right now join later on? Uh, I wish you could, but unfortunately today was the final day to set rosters. Okay. So, I mean, you, you hope we make a good run enough to some of those Purdue guys. Like, obviously, you want to win it all, but let's just say we get to the final four and lose you. Then you hope a couple of those Purdue guys that maybe set out this year get the itch and be like, hey, I want to come over here and get the job done. Sure. Yeah, that, that's changed. In the past, I believe, you were able to add guys as the tournament went on. So that's, that's a different rule than it was a few years ago. Um, but yeah, let's let's move into some current Purdue hoops. Yep. How are you feeling about the squad next year? Obviously, Zach Eady is gone. They didn't touch the portal at all. If you had to guess, do you think Purdue is going to be a top 25 team next year? I uh, definitely think we'll be top 25. Um, it'll be exciting. Obviously, everybody's waiting to see what Purdue is without Zach Eady. You know, yeah. I think it's going to just be a great storyline just coming in, but you got guys like Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer. I think Trey Kaufman Wren is going to have an exceptional year just because now he's going to be the main feature guy in the post. And then you got Miles Colvin, Cam Heidi, um, Jakari Harrison. You got, you got a lot of new guys and new roles that's going to get opportunities to play. I think this may be one of Purdue's more athletic and faster teams. So it's going to be interesting just to see the style of play, but Knowing Coach Painter and the system he has and that veteran leadership, I don't expect us not to be in the top 25 when it's all said and done. What do you think we can see from Fletcher Lawyer and Braden Smith without Zach Eady? Because they did a great job their first two years, but having the best player in the country who's seven foot four, that helps the transition to college. How do you think they'll look without him? Uh, I, I, um, I think they're comfortable enough. Fletcher's obviously a great shooter, so everybody knows he can shoot the ball. So I think... His scouting report really doesn't change as much. I think Braden Smith is the guy that everybody's going to pay close attention to because obviously when you're running the pick and roll with the best player in college basketball, so much attention is going to be drawn to him. But I also think this will give Braden Smith a chance to even show how much more he was effective in the pick and roll and also made life of Zach Eady you know, a little bit easier. You can always lob it up, but I think he'll be a lot more aggressive and you'll see a lot more of him controlling the offense and being ran through him, but I think it'll be a, I think it'll be great. You know what I mean? Just because we are, we we get to see who Braden Smith is, and if he does what we think he will do, he'll be the best point guard in college basketball. All right, and so give me your thoughts the the cannon catching situation. I thought that was interesting. What do you think of it? And what do you think of Matt Painter's reaction and, and what he said to the press? Oh, uh, I mean, a little shocking. You know what I mean? A little shocking. Like even for me, when we first signed Cannon. Just knowing his resume at first is like, hey, do you think this kid is actually really going to commit? I thought maybe he was going to finish out of OT, maybe go overseas. And um, just with Coach Painter, I trust him so much. I think he just probably made the best decision for Purdue. I think a lot of fans, there's no disrespect to Kane. I think he's a phenomenal talent. But I think Coach Painter just looked at the situation being, you know, it's already maybe a few little things here and there debating Rocky and we want to do what's best for Purdue so I think we should go our separate ways and I don't ah, I don't want to say it in a bad way because I don't think the key is bad I just think Coach Painter probably looked at it and said you know well let's make this decision now so there's no confusion going into the, to the year you know what I mean everybody knows what's clean cut and dry and let's just handle what we can do that takes stones I honestly loved what Painter did there I, I think that takes a lot of stones because obviously he's a legit ta talent just to walk away and say hey we're good we don't we don't need to deal with whatever you got going on um I, I i got a lot of respect for that and that leads to my next question with painter is where are you going to rank them amongst current college coaches right now where is matt painter uh i'm biased but i mean i, I at least say top five you know i i think he's top two you obviously got to tip your hat off to Danny Hurley. Dan, Danny Hurley and what he's doing over there at UConn. But for me, I think he's a top five guy just because what he recruits. And like you said, just even those decisions right there, like to tell a kid that's so talented like Kenny, hey, we're going to go a different direction, but believe so much in his team that he knows 
what that product is to be able to move away. And he's winning constantly each year. So for me, top five coach, I would honestly put him in two. But if somebody argues, I'm I'm here to listen. I, I agree. I That's exactly where I would put him. I would put him at two. You can't put him over Hurley. He's won back-to-back titles. But Painter, just like you said, he's a beacon of consistency. And he, he in my opinion, he's a lot more likable than Danny Hurley. Uh, <laughs> I, that, that's just my opinion. But, um... But yeah, let's move on to Zach Eady, right? Yeah. A lot of people, there's a lot of doubts, a lot of mixed reactions. I actually made a video talking about this, but a lot of people think Zach Eady is going to be a bust. I don't agree with it, but if you had to predict once again, what do you think his NBA career is going to look like? Um, You know, I I think honestly, first, he, first and foremost, he landed in the perfect, situ- perfect situation for him. Being with a... A gritty team, obviously one of the best point guards in the NBA right now. You have to respect him coming off that pick and roll. I think for Zach, it's a great situation because now we don't – I never expected Zach to go in the NBA and average 20. Like, that's not going to be your job. But now he can be a Clint Capella S-type player, um, you know, just rim running, get some block shots, protect the rim, get some dunks here and there, play off your big. So I don't think his – you looking at him as a bust, you can't look at his production far as let's score a lot of points, but I think he's walking into a place where he can be the new Steve, Steven Adams, if you ask me. And I think, you know, if you get five to seven years out of Zach Eady, which I think he could play more because his conditioning from just the college ranks was phenomenal. When you really take a step back and you're like, hey, this dude was getting up and down the court, really playing hard, I think he'll be able to sustain in the league. And if you get five to seven years again, I don't think he's a bust, especially the way the game is being played now. 100%. That's funny you say that because I, in my video, that's who I compared him to with Steven Adams. If Steven Adams at 6'10", 6'11", can make a living and have such a nice career in the modern NBA without much of a jump shot, you know, because he can run the floor, protect the rim, provide some muscle, grab some boards, set solid screens, why can't Zach Eady do it? And you look at their combine times when Steven Adams tested versus Zach Eady. They're very comparable. Eady's better in some categories. Adams is better in other categories. And the categories that Adams is better at, Eady has about four or five inches to make up for a vertical jump discrepancy or, um, you know, max vertical jump. So I totally agree. I think Zach Eady, I think the floor is really high for him where I, I don't think there's a chance he'll bust, quite honestly. My yeah. question is the ceiling. I have no idea. Like you you said, you don't expect him to drop 20 um, a game, which, yeah, I, I really have no idea what to make of a ceiling. But I, if in the modern NBA, everyone talks about, you know, you need to be able to stretch the floor and do all that. Well, how did Stephen Adams make such a nice career? And he doesn't really right. stretch the floor at all. So I, I – and you mentioned Clint Capella. You know, he's a lot bigger and stronger than him. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, th- I, th- I agree. I think it's a great situation for Edie, and I don't see him busting at all. And I, I don't understand how people can also think that Donovan Klingon is a surefire uh, <laughs> NBA player when Zach Edie literally out-tested him at every athletic measure, every yeah. physical measurement, every athletic measurement. Edie outperformed him, but people think Klingon is a surefire thing to be a, a really solid NBA player. That just that just contradicts itself, in my opinion, because Edie on paper is a better athlete, and he's bigger, and he's stronger, and he won the one-on-one matchup. So that one doesn't right. make a lot of sense to me. I agree. I agree with you. I, I try to wrap my brain around it. I don't just. I think maybe it's just the fact that he's 7'4". So maybe people just think, like, with the history of bigs, maybe he'll struggle. But I try to wrap my brain around it, too. Like, you got guys in San Antonio and other places. I mean, Walker Kessler is a phenomenal player in Utah, but I'm looking at Zach Eady and saying he can do some of those same similar yeah, things. 100%. So, you know, and going back to Memphis, now you got Jaron Jackson Jr. He's a stretch forward. You got Gigi Jackson, Desmond Bain. Like, you got guys that spread the floor. So now that paint is where he needs to operate. And I think, you know, like I said, getting him six to ten points a game, a couple rebounds and blocks, I think he does a great job and, and lasts in the league. Yeah, and we'll get to see him hopefully with a little more one-on-one coverage. In college, you know, he's in quadruple teams. So yeah, I, I think he went to his left hand in that, that summer league game the other night and – Against Klingon before they went to the double team and the triple team when they were going one-on-one coverage in the national championship game, we saw a beautiful up and under. I think there's more yeah. to his bag than anyone realizes. So, yeah, I, we're, we're in agreement there. I, I The floor for me is a very solid NBA career, and then anything above yeah. that is just, you know, a chair on top of the Sunday. But, yeah, to wrap this up, wrap up the interview, we're going to do a little – 
Uh, Purdue Boilermaker all time draft mm. in the Matt Painter, uh, Matt Painter, Matt Painter era. <laughs> um, so so we're, uh, I have a coin right here. We're going to do starting oh, wow. lineups in a six man. Uh, Lewis, you're going to have to trust my, uh, my honesty here, but are you going to go heads or tails? Ooh, this is a big decision right here. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. All right. Hopefully I can smoothly catch this thing. No Heads it pick. is. Heads yes, it is. Sir. You got the first yes, pick. Sir. It was so much pressure thinking about that. Uh, well, <laughs> with the first pick, no doubt. I'm taking Zach Eady. Got to take oh, Zach right. <laughs> I thought you were going to take one of your peers. I thought you were going to go Robbie or Jawan. Or... Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I, um, I thought about it. I went back and forth. I said, I said, I think he's thinking I'm going to take one of my guys first. I, but did. I was like, you you kind of, I was like, if I can get this first pick, I can kind of, you know, figure some things out from here. So, yeah, let's take Zach. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll go. I'm going to go with, I'll go. I think that you'll take him. Oh, you're, I know you're going to take one of these two next. So I'll just go Robbie Hummel. Okay. Okay. Take Rob. Okay. Who? I, mm. I wouldn't expect you to take Rob. I'm going to take each one. I got to take each one more. I got to take each one more. Okay. Yeah. Give me Jaden Ivey then. Ah, good pick. Good pick. Good pick. We're going to be, we're going to be heavy at the guard just to get it out the way. Give me Carson Edwards. Give wow. Me, give me, yeah. You did not? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll take Jawan Johnson then. I'm stunned you did not take Jawan Johnson. So, right now, I have Ivy, Hummel, Johnson, and you have – who do you have right now? I got Edie, Moore, Carson. Okay. I was hoping that you wouldn't take Jawan. Ah, oh, you got Jawan and Rob. <laughs> I, I was definitely planning on putting Jawan in my four. I was definitely planning to put Jawan in my four. Uh, my four. I'm scared you might take my pick. Let's just do this to be safe, cause I, I I'll be okay with either one I get at my four, at my three. This is tough. Give me Vincent Edwards. Give me Vincent, Vincent Edwards. Edwards. Yeah. Okay. Um, for this next pick, I think it comes down between. I got to draft a center who can match up with Zach Eady, and there's two guys who can do it the best. Would be Haas ah. and Hammonds. Um. I'll go AJ. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go AJ uh, Hammonds. I, I uh, think he'll be a decent matchup. <laughs> oh, that was I was gonna put AJ at my four. That was that's, my, that's that a was big team. team. <laughs> yeah, that was my sleeper. You just ah, oh, that was. That Let's was go. Oh, that was big time. Ah, oh, I thought I had that one in the tuck. Uh, hmm. These two, I'm back and forth. One, I'm just a fan favorite of them. Uh. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Biggie Swanigan. God rest his soul. I'm gonna take Biggie yes, Swanigan sir. at my four. Yeah, well, that's a great pick, all American. Um, oh, and I'm not just doing this to suck up to my guest, but I'm, I need a point guard. Carson Edwards is off the table. I go Brady Smith or Lewis Jackson. I'm, I'm gonna go Lewis Jackson. I'm gonna oh. take you. I'll take you at the point. I'm honored. I'm honored because I was definitely gonna pick myself as the six man. I'm honored. <laughs> I'm honored. Oh man. Is you you or Braden? Um, me or Braden. Now this just oh I got I got a guy coming off the bench. This is tricky. I got enough shooters. Hmm. You know what? Ah, I like PJ Thompson. I like because PJ can run my team if things get rough. You oh, I forgot about PJ Thompson, but I'm content got, with my point guard pick. Yeah, you got Braden. You got Braden. Braden's still there. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the guys that's still there just stay. He gotta he gotta finish it out. Uh I'm gonna go with a wild card, because he can play the one through the three, even the four sometimes. We'll take Kelsey Barlow. We'll okay. Take Kelsey Barlow. Yeah, we'll take Kelsey. Let's, let's go. So to wrap this up, it's, it's between for me. I, I got three. I got Braden Smith, Chris Kramer. Mm. Or Dakota Mathias. I'll go Dakota Mathias. Bring some shooting off the bench. You need so. the shooter. I thought, I thought about Dakota. Ryan Klein. I went back and forth. I went back and forth. Yeah, can't go wrong. That's can't go wrong. 
Okay, go All right. On. Well, you list your team, then I'll list mine. All right. So we got we got Zach Eady at the five, Biggie Swanigan at the four, Vincent Edwards at the three, Etwan Moore at the two, Carson Edwards at my one, and Kelsey Barlow as my six man. All right, so I got Lewis Jackson at the point, Jaden Ivey at the two, Robbie Hummel at the three, Jawan Johnson at the four, AJ Hammonds at the five, and at the six-man spot, we're going to go Dakota Mathias. Um, yeah, let's go closing arguments. Make an argument why your team beats my team. Oh, that's tough. Uh, got dogs. No disrespect to my guys, but I think we got enough. We got enough firepower. We got enough firepower at all position. Carson Edwards, each one more. Both can go get you 30. And in this game with Purdue discipline and principles, I feel like I got the two guards that can break people down, get our bigs, get everybody some easier buckets. So, I, yeah, that's that's going to be my logic right there. We got the guards to get it done. Okay, I will go. Jaden Ivey is the best athlete on the court. And Robbie Hummel, probably the most skilled player, I would say, in this game. You know, especially at 6'9", people forget how nasty he was in his heyday before that injury. Um, he was probably, would you say Robbie was probably going to be a lottery pick? Definitely a first-round pick before he got hurt. I, I, I always believe top 15. I, I think that, that junior year, I think for sure top 15 lottery pick easily if he doesn't yeah. hurt his name. Yeah, yeah he, he was legit. We got the sniper off the bench, Dakota Mathias, and then I think you're going to have a lot of fun throwing lobs up to Juwan Johnson and A.J. Hammond. So it's up to you guys. I'll, uh, I'll make a poll and also leave a comment down um, and say who you got and why. And, Lewis, thank you so much uh, for coming back on the show. And, actually, I got one question for you that, that uh, just came to mind. Has, have we seen Zach Eady ever match up with any of these former Purdue big men in, like, open gyms like Haas or Hammonds? Or has that ever happened? Never. Not uh, a, not AJ, not Juwan. I'm trying to think. Haas just left, so maybe just Matt Harms and a young Zach okay. Eady, but the other guys, no, I, I would pay money. I would pay money to see yeah. those matches. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, well, yeah, Lewis, once again, thank you so much for your time. It was a blast to have you back on the show. I'll throw uh, your social medias down in the description. And, yeah, best of luck and looking forward to staying connected along the way. Uh, thank you, man. Appreciate you having me on again.